I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about, I feel stuck after my breakup. Well, breakups are so traumatizing in so many different ways. And after it happens, you go through so many different emotions, so many different feelings. You're trying to repair things. You're afraid your ex is gonna move on. You're beating yourself up. You're anxious, you're depressed. And ultimately, many of you get motivated, which is a great thing. And that's one of my favorite things about a breakup is how motivated people can be after a breakup. But there are a lot of times where people feel stuck. I would say it's completely normal to be stuck for like six months, oh, nine yeah. months. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even a year can be normal depending upon the relationship, mm -hmm. how serious it was, you know, and a lot of that has to do with our own attachment issues, right? Sometimes people feel stuck for many years. Yeah. Very frustrating when you get stuck that long and your life feels like it's on hold for that long, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be talking about this today, feeling stuck, feeling like you're in a rut and you can't get out of it. Right, and sometimes it can even turn into a very deep depression where you're experiencing all of the criteria of a major depressive episode. Yeah. You know, staying in bed, not being able to care for yourself, being super isolated, it affecting your sleeping and eating. So a breakup can have a profound impact on our mental health and our functioning. And we say this to normalize it in a way. You know, many of you are experiencing this and are feeling, man, I must be the odd one out. This is affecting me more than it has been affecting anybody else. No, there's other people that can be deeply affected too. Yeah. So just to have that awareness that you're not alone. When we do see a deep depression like this happening after a breakup, it's normally because the breakup has touched a core wound and a core attachment wound. You know, it's likely that you have felt some of these feelings before at some point in your life, most likely in childhood. And so this is what we really want to dissect in this video is getting into the deeper reasons as to what is keeping you stuck. Yeah. So a breakup can feel like a form of abandonment or betrayal. And this might be the core wound for you. Maybe you had a parent leave when you were very young. I did. Mm. Yeah, my dad left my mom. And so that had a big impact on me. I was only a year and a half old, something wow. like that. Yeah. And then things were so tense and traumatic, you know, between them that, you know, I'm sure it was very stressful for my mom and my dad too, but I, as a baby, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And you have to consider that, that a child's mind is a lot different than an adult's mind. Many of you are like, well, that happened so long ago. How can it have an impact? Well, when a child's brain is developing, every little minuscule detail makes such a huge difference. Mm -hmm. The first three years of your life are the most important and the more more love support uh, that you're given uh, emotional attunement availability the healthier you're going to be mm -hmm. when a child's brain doesn't have to focus on survival it can focus on developing normally that's how it is yep so that's why you know children in the safest environments they're able to explore they're able to play that is how they learn and grow yep but in different environments, you know, these, these experiences can really traumatize you and keep a child on edge for their entire childhood, into their adulthood, into their romantic relationships. So, you know, reflecting back, what was my childhood like? Was there anything here that's, that this relationship reminds me of? Is this relationship an echo of a previous hurt or pain? Yeah, which I didn't realize for many, many years. Uh, when I started studying breakups, I really realized how the attachment trauma we had in our childhood is mirrored in how we're feeling in the breakup. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. And a breakup can cause a lot of those previous traumas to resurface. When we experience a major loss like that, somebody that we've been connected with, somebody that we do have hopes and dreams with, it can remind us of other times where we felt completely hopeless and helpless. Mm -hmm. Your ex may have also been a key attachment figure for you or reminded you of a key attachment figure. It might have been the first time that you've ever been held in that way or touched in that way or seen in that way. It may have been the first time that you really felt safe with another person where you could really be yourself and explore and play. Mm -hmm. So that could have been something that was robbed from your childhood that you now got to experience as an adult with this adult partner. Mm -hmm. you know, becoming children again with the person. That is something that's really special. So losing that, you get this sense of, oh my gosh, that was the first time I've ever felt that. Will that be the only time I ever feel that? And so these types of thoughts can keep yeah. us in that rut and it can be so challenging to, to try to dig yourself out of it. Yeah, it's really tough. But there are things that you can do for yourself, practically, that you can actually physically do to help yourself in that situation and help imp improve your mood even if you don't feel like it and probably very often you don't mm. being social yeah you may be around all your friends and all you're thinking about is your breakup or your ex but it's good to be with people that you care about and you can be social with being active you may feel so depressed you don't want to get out of the bed it's hard. Mm -hmm. And it is really, it is yeah. tough. You know, a lot of our traumas are stored in the body. I'm sure many of you have heard that famous Vessel van der Kolk book of the body keeps the score. Mm -hmm. You know, our bodies can store memories in ways. And so it's important to continue moving our body and processing our trauma, processing our breakup, even using our bodies. Let's say you are in bed all day and yeah. you feel like you can't get up even just stretching, even just bringing awareness to certain muscle groups, where that sadness sits in your body. Mm -hmm. It can be, maybe this is woohoo-y, but maybe even massaging it out, you know, placing your hand over that area of your body where you feel that tension the most, you know, bringing awareness to it, breathing into it. Mm -hmm. These things are very simple, but you know, when, when you don't have much energy and it's the most you can do, it can be helpful. Take the box of donuts and put it on the other side of the room. <laughs> so you have to reach for the donuts. You know what's interesting? <laughs> there was a story that I heard about um, a, a contortionist. Mm -hmm. And the reason that she became a contortionist is because she was so depressed that all she could do was watch TV all day. And she would just stretch and stretch mm -hmm. and stretch. <laughs> and if you leave the donuts just far enough away, you'll you have stretch to stretch and be active like we're telling you. <laughs> But I've always found that story interesting. <laughs> that is really, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, you find yourself in a rut, but you're still there. You're still existing. And on some level, even when you feel like you're not doing much and are so demotivated, there's little things that you can do that over time you find yourself, whoa, now I'm super bendy. <laughs> <laughs> so funny <if> thing. <laughs> you can be super bendy. <laughs> it's better than not being super bendy, right? <laughs> You can make some new friends being super bendy. <laughs> you probably could. <laughs> like you could talk to people behind you that you probably couldn't have before. <laughs> That's not exactly what I was thinking, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of this is unjust, but I hope that you understand that our point being taking small steps can get you somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you have to take care of yourself. Right. You have to take care of your body. You have to try and do your best to sleep mm -hmm. and to get on a sleep schedule that will help you feel rested. Eating is important, mm -hmm. even though you may not feel like it. I know when I was going through my breakup, I did not want to eat at all. I'd be drinking. It was like when I'm sick and I'm eating yeah. crackers and Gatorade. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do, do whatever little bits you can to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself. Self-care is so important. Mm -hmm. In whatever way that you can find that helps you feel even a little bit better just for a little bit, that, that will make a difference. Yeah. Some of the deeper, more emotional work that you can get into whenever you do feel ready includes therapy, of course. We on this channel, pretty much in every video, try to encourage mental health, seeking professional help, somebody that you can talk to on a weekly basis to process this grief, trauma, whatever you have experienced can be a huge help. Mm -hmm. And that thought can be really scary. Well, what if things get worse when I start revisiting these memories? 
One thing that I learned from Margaret that I loved is she really believed in the body's natural ability to heal and natural ability to surface the right memories at the right time. She would always say that your body won't give you anything that you can't handle, and I loved that. And she would always be a little bit cautious about hypnosis and certain types of treatment that mm -hmm. can bypass uh, your defense uh, mechanism. Right. Right, so I love that she had this idea of the body naturally healing itself, bringing up things for you to process when you're ready. So I would encourage all of you to go to therapy um, if you are dealing with this type of issues, these types of issues. Processing the breakup, finding themes throughout your loss. Another thing that I le learned from Margaret is she would talk about how with grief, it's kind of like when you pick up a paper clip from one of those paper clip boxes. Mm -hmm. All of the other ones follow through. You can't seem to get just one. And that's how grief is sometimes. You bring with it all your other losses. So through processing the breakup, processing other times where you felt that loss. And of course, Margaret would bring her paper clips here and drop oh, them on the floor. Would. They're probably still are. <laughs> they are still around the floor. I found one about a week Did ago. You really? Yeah, oh, it was like her saying hi. <laughs> yeah, she came for a visit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, she did. She probably has them stored everywhere, and she kicks one out from under a, you know, a piece of furniture or something when she comes by. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so find those themes in your own life and in your own experiences. And lastly allowing yourself to feel. It seems so simple and maybe an abstract idea to feel emotions. Like, how do you really do that? Do you sit and you're just like, okay, emotions, I'm ready for you. Hit me. <laughs> Hit me hard. <laughs> but it's true. You know, you have to give yourself time to think and when emotions do arise, to not have that instinctual, well, I'm going to block it down. Yeah. And yeah. if you've been stretching, you can dodge it like the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you can dodge those feelings coming at you. <laughs> One of the things that I used to do throughout some of my breakups is just having a tissue box in the car. Lord knows how many tissues I would use because that would be a, a space where you're alone. It can be quiet in there mm -hmm. um, besides like other people driving around. But if you're on the highway, it's not like anybody's going to really be looking at you. But it felt like a little safe space for me. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that, you know, if I did have... I don't know, a tough day at work or went to go visit a friend where some of these themes came up and I found myself obsessing about an ex or, or some type of loss or grief, I knew I could go back in my car, that box of tissues would be there and I would have time to process. Mm -hmm. So just a little tip, you know, allow yourself that time to, to feel it. Another thing I want to mention is that, and this came up recently in one of my calls, is this idea of letting go. We have this idea that we have to let go of our ex or let go of the grief. Instead, I would look at it as, as letting in, letting in those emotions. A lot of times when there is this reoccurring theme, oh, I can't get this ex out of my head, there's something there that's unprocessed. So instead of looking at it from the perspective of, oh, I just got to let this go and move on. No, I got to let this in. What is my body trying to tell me? Mm. What really am I feeling? Um, avoiding that grief tends to prolong it. Margaret would always say that it takes a great deal of energy to suppress emotion. Yeah, so, it does. It, it's in that unconscious. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to try and slowly get it out, not get too overwhelmed right. by it. And of course, the creative healing course would help with oh, a lot yeah. of that too, yeah. because it's going to help process a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Have hope for your future. And I know it's tough in the moment, but you know you want to think about the future in positive ways. You know, thinking about new things, new experiences, new hobbies, new interests, new things that motivate you, um, even personal growth, just thinking about how different you'd like to be, how much more confident you'd like to be, how you'd like to work through those issues and things that trigger you, it make you lose emotional self-control and feel powerless in your relationships. You know, those can all be helpful. Use positive affirmations. We have some videos with positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. The course has, what, 10 oh, yeah. audio tracks with uh -huh. positive, 10 separate tracks with audio affirmations. Yeah, we have a good amount. Yeah, I think three with you, three with Margaret, yeah. and four with me. Yeah. Um, positive self-talk. Margaret loved positive oh, yeah. self-talk. This is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so much that, that you can do to encourage yourself and motivate you, even in very small ways, and even diving deep into yourself, your own thoughts, 
how you think about things. So another thing that I want to leave you with is also thinking and believing that you can get through this. Sometimes when we're feeling the most intense side of our emotions, they can tell us, well, this is how it's going to be forever. You're never going to move past this. You're always going to have this in the back of your mind. It's not true. You know, if you believe that you can get through it, then you can get through it. And many of us were also in this hopeless state. Many of us had once believed after a breakup that we wouldn't be able to make it, that, you know, we, we couldn't stand these intense emotions and just that idea of how am I ever going to live without feeling this? But we do. You know, the body and mind has an incredible power to heal. Yep. And, and we truly believe that. So focus on that. Absolutely. And of course, we can help you too. Mm. And that's what we're here for. So when you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. You just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.